Welcome back everyone. I know it's been quite a while since I've done a video, and this one has been a long time coming, so I wanted to take some time to apologize for the delay. Life has become quite busy for me, and I have a number of projects that I've been working on, both personal and related to VTM and Blood Hunt. These projects, work, and the ever-present desire to just play Blood Hunt have made it difficult to find time to work on videos. In addition, I've been hoping to get just a little bit more info about M out of the game before I pull the trigger on this video, and with the most recent update, I feel we've reached a satisfactory point in her story and what we learned about her to finally see it through. M is a Ventru and child of the former Prince Marcus. Though she hails from the U.S. and normally resides in California, she came to Prague to support her sire in his efforts to organize and successfully execute the peace talks between the Camarilla and the Anarchs, now known as the Second Convention of Prague. In the fallout the night after the convention, M arrived in the Elysium claiming to bear a mandate from the Camarilla's Ventru Justicar to take control of the situation and clean up the city, restoring the masquerade. The self-styled Chief of Security immediately set about her task, much to the consternation of acting Prince Kirill. Though she prefers politics and negotiation when dealing with a situation, she is no stranger to violence, having spent many years as an ATF agent and knows her way around various firearms and other weapons. Often described as ambitious, professional, and pragmatic, she embraces these descriptions readily, and these traits, along with an air of confidence, are evident immediately upon speaking with her. As is typical of many Ventru, she has numerous resources at her disposal both in terms of weaponry and personnel, even though she has not been in Prague in several years. This is likely because M inherited Marcus's weapons empire and the office she currently occupies, along with whatever resources she controls already. Upon taking charge, M immediately set about trying to restore the masquerade and undo the damage done by Carol's blunt force attempts to destroy the Anarchs. She quickly sends messages to the other members of the court to remind them of their place. Seeing her as the far superior option, Maya and Omnis throw their support behind her immediately while Custis hopes to see her and Carol find a way to work together. Though M attempts to extend an olive branch to Kirill, it becomes clear that he has no interest in playing nice with her. With M on the offensive, Kirill quickly began to lose much of his footing and started resorting to counterattacks that quickly became more petty than effective as time went on. Dull minds win no wars, especially not with dull blades, as she likes to put it, and in her estimation, Kirill is both. M views her task of restoring the masquerade not as an end goal, but merely as a starting point. She is determined to see it done quickly and efficiently, knowing that the reputation of her clan is at stake in the city due to the former prince's fumbling of the Second Convention. We know a little about M's life before her embrace, and though she is of Indian descent, it appears she may have been born or at least raised in the U.S. In addition, a rough time frame of when her embrace may have taken place can be presumed based on clues that can be found in the game. It appears she had met Ronald Reagan at one point, likely while he was in politics because of her work as an ATF agent, which would place her in that position sometime in the late 1960s to late 1980s. M's life first intersected with the Kindred during her first visit to Prague in pursuit of a gun trader. Her work got messy in a political way, in her words, and set her on a path that saw her losing faith in the U.S. government and put her squarely in the sights of Marcus. He invited her to work for him, and though she enjoyed hunting criminals, she found it a breath of fresh air to work on the other side of things. Ultimately, she was embraced, and unlike many kindred to be, Marcus gave her the choice to receive it. Much of M's early time as a kindred is mostly shrouded in mystery, though a few stories can be gleaned from her time spent by Marcus's side. She often took on missions for him, as she did near the end of her mortal life, dealing with situations that Marcus did not want to leave to Kirill. She tells one story of dealing with a Malkavian who had been leaking Camarilla info to the Anarchs. Meeting with her under the guise of a trade deal for vessels, she put the Malkavian into torpor during the meeting to offer to Marcus, who felt she would be more willing to talk at a later date. Ultimately, however, M was not happy in Prague, and she stated that she prefers to do her business anywhere but there. Eventually, M wound up in California and made her way through kindred society there. Once again, very little is known of her time in the U.S. outside of anecdotal stories of little consequence. However, she has made mention of the Anarch Baron Victor Temple, so she may have had run-ins with him in her time there. Once planning for the Second Convention of Prague neared its completion, Marcus requested that M return to the city and provide her talents in overseeing the security for the meeting. Before the second convention took place, M talked in private with Laraz, Marcus's seneschal, and their reservations for the meeting, worried that Marcus was getting in over his head and if things went wrong, it would drag them both down. It turned out that Marcus too had his own reservations. In a letter left to his child, he expressed his worries at the meetings to come, knowing that the Anarchs were unreliable at best. Either things would succeed and Marcus's star would rise once more, or his end would come swiftly. Considering this, he bequeathed his holdings, including his arms trade business and the office attached to the Castle Prague Elysium, to M. 
Speaking of his pride in her ability, he hoped she would finally find a place in the city, but even if she chose not to stay, he knew she would do well. As is well established now, the night in question did not go as planned. The meeting was attacked, and many kindred met their final death at the hands of the entity, the rest scattering in fear or fighting their way out in desperation. M survived the attack despite her contingency plan for escaping the country being thwarted by the clearly prepared Second Inquisition forces. However, it came at the cost of her ghoul Andre, who perished in a car crash when trying to lose an entity tail on his way to pick up M. It is unclear what she did in lieu of her plans, but she arrived in the Elysium sometime after Omnis, preceded by several Ventru to prepare her way. Carol raged at the idea that he and his soldiers performed the brunt of the work in the immediate wake of the attack, only to have the Ventru sweep in and pick up the reins once the hardest part was done. Nonetheless, this is exactly what M did. In her estimation, she did her part in maintaining the security of the convention flawlessly, feeling that the others did not pay enough attention to their jobs. The result was now an issue that remained for her to handle. Bearing a mandate from Lucinda, just a car of Clan Ventru, and a lack of regard or stake in the petty intrigues among the kindred of Prague, M seized authority to oversee the Camarilla's efforts at restoring the masquerade at the city, immediately setting about assigning operations to harry anarch forces and undermine the entity's authority to operate in the city. Despite the claims that the mandate was given to her in payment of a boon o de Marcus, it turned out to be a forgery. Someone had been meant to arrive on a train with proof to this end, but Bruja Anarchs attacked it, suspecting a Camarilla VIP would arrive on it. Though the individual got away, the train car that they had occupied contained a multitude of weapons. The Bruja were unsuccessful in trying to hunt her. Others tried to track the kindred in question as well, but she ultimately wound up in the hands of the entity and was lost to all who sought her out. Despite the loss, proof of M's lie about the mandate and attempts to doctor footage to further her ends was found and analyzed by both Maya and Omnis. Though her subterfuge was discovered by the two Privagen, they left M unaware. The two kept M secret to themselves, and either through their unwillingness to allow Carol to remain in power, or because of their own machinations, they each presented falsified evidence to Custis to show that the Sheriff was creating more problems than he was solving, dissolving the last of Carol's support amongst the present court of Prague. With Carol's power seemingly cut off at the roots, and the support of the other Primogen, M took the opportunity to officially claim the title of Prince, overriding Kirill's temporary acquisition of the title. With this act, she secured for herself the power to guide the fate of Prague as she deemed best. However, the night is not yet over, and history has shown that matters have a way of going from bad to worse in record time. Will M be able to see the night through and maintain a hold on the city as a Camarilla domain, preserving the masquerade and rooting out the Anarchs and the Entity? Or will the city fall? <laughs>